Good morning. No typo. It's Friday morning, Friday a.m., which means last night was NFL kickoff, and what a freaking game we had in our hands. A nail-biter. Panthers, take that L. You hold that. Infinite Jordan crying face memes came out this morning with Cam. Love that shit. We saw the Broncos pull off 21-20 victory on a miss. Graham Gano shanked field goal. He got ice, iced, baby. Uh, great game. Way to kick off the NFL season. Now, I'm not normally going to do videos like this, but you know what? I was up early. I'm feeling good. I got some caffeine in me, and I was like, fuck it, man. Let's do a little recap of last night. Let's talk about my takeaways, the good, the bad, the fugly, and uh, what I see from both of these teams kind of moving forward. So, play that. Let's start on the Panthers side of the ball. Now, if I have share, if I have stock in the Panthers offense on my fantasy team, I'm pumped up. I'm ecstatic right now because the Broncos are going to be by far the best defensive team you're going to play all year. And the Panthers still played well on offense. Well enough to produce for your fantasy team. Cam, not a great passing out output last night, but he still put up a 20 spot for you. I mean, you can't be mad at that. Looking forward, the matchups are going to get way easier on defense for him. They get to start playing the NFC South now. You know, the easier defenses roll in, and Cam's only going to put up more numbers from here. He was, you know, he threw like 200 yards, a little less than 200 yards, a tutty, a pick. He also rushed 11 times for 54 yards and another tutty, which is obviously what keeps him as such an elite quarterback, that rushing ability. Um, and like I said, I mean, he put up the 20 spot, and this is by far the hardest team he's going to play against going forward. I'm pumped up if I have Cam on my team because uh, he's going to be putting up numbers like he did last year. There's no doubt in my mind, especially with the weapons around him. And we can talk about the rush game now. Jay Stu, another guy I'm, you know, I'm happy with last night's performance. I, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't have started him if he was on my team just based on the matchup, but looking at the overall picture, he got 15 carries. Uh, he wound up with you know 65 yards, so he didn't he didn't produce well from a fantasy standpoint. But look at the other runners. He had Whitaker and um, Tolbert combined for four or five carries, I think it was. So clearly, Stewart's the workhorse here. And as the defensive matchups get more favorable, and the Panthers are you know their favorites, and they're they're taking big leads, and they're up, and they're whooping ass. Stewart's clearly going to get more carries, and he's going to get more work. Um, his ceiling is obviously capped by Cam and the goal line and, and you know, and, and getting those those close touchdowns. But I, I really like Stewart as an RB2 going forward. Um, I think he's due for, for more goal line touchdowns this year. And overall, he's going to keep getting those those 15 to 18 carries a game, you know. And he'll mix in some, he'll sprinkle in a little, a little catch here and there. Uh, when you look at Cam last night, he threw the ball 33 times. And he averaged 31 passes a game last year. So he was above his average last night, and Jay Stu still saw 15 carries. So I think that's kind of like the baseline for him right now. I mean, we saw Cameron Artis Payne was a healthy scratch. Clearly, the Panthers don't give a shit about him. They don't think he's ready to play yet. Uh, so he got benched, which means Stewart is clearly the guy there. So uh, going forward, I think he's a nice RB2, especially against weak matchups. And uh, we have the receiving core, the most interesting part. Clearly, we got my man, Kelvin Benjamin. Oh, I shouldn't say my man, because I probably told mad people to sit him yesterday. I'm sorry. I'm looking at you, Kyle Black. Um, but it ain't my fault, man. Ron Rivera is a liar. He's a liar and a thief. He said Kelvin was going to be on the snap count last night due to conditioning or due to whatever he wanted to, what kind of bullshit he wanted to spew out. Kelvin ended up being... Uh, the most highly played receiver. I don't know if I said that right. He had the most snaps out of any receiver on the Panthers. He was in for 51 of 72 plays, and he was targeted a team high 12 times. I think Ginn had 
41 snaps, and then Philly Corey, Corey Philly Brown, that's one person, believe it or not. Philly Brown had, Philly Brown and Funches both tied for 38 snaps apiece, so it was Kelvin Benjamin, Ted Ginn, and then the two other receivers tied for snaps, which is clearly the pecking order. Benjamin looked good, six for 91, a tutty. Uh, he's back in that w, WR2 conversation, clearly. Um, now, one thing I will say is I think the reason that you only saw Cam throw to Kelvin and Greg Olson, they were, you know, Kelvin got 12 targets, Olson got nine, and the next closest one was Funches with four, and the rest of them had like one or two targets apiece. I do think a lot of that had to do with the pressure that Denver was getting on Cam. He got hit like 40 fucking times. I can't imagine what Cam feels like this morning. He's probably, he needs about 16 Advils and 43 pairs of sunglasses. He uh, he got hit so many times and he kept getting sacked and smacked around. And I think that pressure forced him to throw to, either, you know, his first read. He didn't have time to, you know, Kelvin Benjamin, Devin Funches, Greg Olson. You know, it, it, was, it, was, it was my first target. I have to get the ball out. Otherwise, Von Miller is going to take my fucking head off, you know. So I think as as the defense gets a little less pressure on Cam, he'll be able to go through his reads and guys like Funches, guys like Ted Ginn will will get more looks. Uh, that being said, I don't want to own any any receivers other than Kelvin and Funches. I think Funches is a stash play. You're obviously not starting him from week to week, given how last night worked out, you know. Um, but I do think there is a little more hope for the Panthers on, in the receiving game. You know what I mean? From a defensive standpoint, wasn't too impressed with the Panthers. I was looking at some numbers on Pro Football Focus, and the Panthers, you know, they were expected to start two rookie cornerbacks, actually, because, you know, Josh Norman's in Washington and Charles Tillman's done. Uh, so they were supposed to start this guy, James Bradbury, and another rookie. The other rookie didn't end up starting. James Bradbury did, and according to Pro Football Focus, he was, quote, unquote, a liability. So I think the secondary is going to take a hit, and I think they looked good last night only because they were playing Trevor Simeon. Uh, so I'm a little worried about Carolina when they are going to end up playing, you know, high-powered offenses. The ground game obviously <clears throat> was a problem for them last night. C.J. Anderson ran the ball 20 times, uh, 4.6 yards a carry. Last year they were, you know, like a top 10 or top 8, 7, whatever it was in in. In rushing defense, they're only let up 3.9 yards a carry, uh, so that could end up being a problem for them as well. I think overall, the loss of Norman is going to play a much bigger role than, than people probably expected it to on that D. Uh, but, you know, that's all I got to say for the Panthers. Get them out of here. Let's move over to the Broncos side of things. So, I mean, got to give the man, Trevor Simeon, credit, came away with the dub. That's big, 1 0 on the season. But uh, this definitely hurts Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders' outlook from here on from here on out. He was good short range, mid range, but longer passes weren't weren't really even in the equation. They didn't attempt many of them. I, I don't think he'll be too accurate when it comes to that. He he scored a touchdown on a dump off to C.J. Anderson. He threw two picks. Simeon's not going to light up any scoreboards, regardless of what defense he's playing, and that's clearly going to hurt D. Thomas, and it's going to hurt Sanders. Um, one thing I did like was Virgil Green, though. Virgil Green is a guy I've been preaching this summer as a big-time sleeper tight end. He saw five targets. Not terrible. First game out there with Simeon. Caught four of them for 28 yards, I think it was. The big one, though, was in the red zone. He got wide open in the back of the end zone. Simeon, like an idiot, lobbed one up, and, and uh, Coney Ealy came back and smacked that shit like he's Hakeem Olajuwon. Should have been an easy touchdown. Bridget Green could have put up some nice numbers there, so I think that actually bodes well going forward because you see how they're going to be utilizing him in the red zone. Um, otherwise, the big story here is obviously C.J. Anderson. 20 carries, 92 yards, a tutty. They use them on the goal line, they use them on third down, they use them on early downs. He was their absolute clear, clear workhorse there. 
and he's pretty much locked and loaded as an RB1 going forward. In my pre-draft rankings, I had him as RB10, so I had him as an RB1. Uh, I, I mean, looking at the way things went last night, he could easily finish top 10, top 8, maybe top 5 if this shit keeps up. Uh, Denver's going to keep on looking at ground and pound. I mean, along with that, those 20 carries, 92 yards, and a touchdown, he also added, you know, a lot to the passing game. He snagged four balls for 47 yards and a touchdown, and I think that's a trend you'll see continue with Simeon at quarterback. You know, they love to utilize that short, that short game, whether it's slants to Thomas or to Sanders or dump offs to Virgil Green or CJ Anderson. Uh, Anderson's going to continue to play a big part in that passing game. So if I have CJ, I'm, I'm psyched up. Um, for the rest of Denver, I'm not too psyched up. I, like I said, I like Green as a tight end in deeper leagues, and I think Hill scores his fair share of touchdowns somewhere in the 6-7 range probably this year. Uh, D. Thomas, I'm obviously nervous about. I think he, I think he's a wide receiver too in good matchups. Like next week, they play, play the Colts, uh, so the Colts defense is terrible right now. They're, they're only good guy in the secondary is Vontae Davis, and he's going to be out, who's a stud actually, but he's going to be out for at least four weeks. Uh, so Demarius and Emmanuel will be going against some trash D-backs, and I think I think they'll both be solid wide receiver for two plays next week. Um, I was excited about them this week because, you know, they were going against a little bit weaker of D-backs, but didn't work out. I apologize. Next week should be a big bounce back for them in this offense as a whole. Their defense, uh, I mean, they look ridiculous. Always getting pressure on Cam, you know, play in, play out. And that that Carolina offense is no joke. So when the Panthers, I mean, when the, when the Broncos have a serious, you know, favorable matchup, they're going to do just as well as they did last year. And they're probably end up as a number one defense, if not top three, obviously. So those who use the pick on them. Golf clap to you. And I think that's really all I got to say for now. I mean, if you guys have any any other questions or anything you think I should have touched on, put a comment below. You know the deal. So just to recap, I'm pumped up about Cam, pumped up about Kelvin. Stash funches because I didn't think Cam really got to go through his reads with all the pressure that, that Denver defense was getting on him. I think funches will have his games. Definitely stash him. Um, Stewart, I'm also pumped up about. He got his volume, and uh, as the matchups get better, he'll get more work. I'm a little worried about the Panthers' secondary going forward, so I think that's matchups you could take advantage of uh, for you know when a, when a nice, a good quarterback plays and good wide receivers play against them. Denver side of ball, I'm worried about D. Thomas. I think he drops down to a wide receiver three in bad matchups. Same with Sanders. I think they can both be kind of viewed equally here. Uh, in good matchups, they can both be bumped up to wide receiver twos. C.J. Anderson clearly locked in as a QB1. <clears throat> I mean, he's not a quarterback, huh? Good stuff. RB1, Virgil Green will keep creeping up. They'll score the tutties. And Denver defense is Denver defense. They're going to keep doing their thing. So that's really all i got to say about Thursday night football. And I cannot wait for Sunday, man. That shit cannot come soon enough. You know what my ass is going to be doing? Watch. TV, right there. That's about it. I'll be in this like two foot space like this for like 10 straight hours probably once kickoff commences. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it that thumbs up, give that share. It's the only way YouTube's gonna give me more exposure and I gotta help everyone i'm trying to save the world one fantasy football episode at a time i don't even know what i'm saying anymore um yeah give it a thumbs up share like subscribe but follow us on twitter as always at bdg big dog got eat underscore fantasy fb and uh see you. Bye. hold up wait a minute y'all thought i was finished name that song so i totally just ended that so it's done the episode, but on my way to the gym, I walk outside and I've got a package from the NFL shop. I know what this is. I'm gonna open it for y'all. I'm fucking pumped. Oh, let me see them sticks. Let me see them double ones. Chia! This here 
This shit right here. This shit right here. Oh my god, it's lit, fam. It's fleek. It's on lit. Whatever the, whatever the young whippersnappers are saying nowadays. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at it. The only Falcons jersey I have or had was, uh, oh, this isn't even stitched in. That kind of is, whatever. Was Roddy White. And you know he did. So I got my Julio. I also ordered a Desmond Trufant jersey too, because he's a stud on the outside. He's going to be elite soon. Just wait on it. JWOI, baby. Uh, but it was like, it wasn't like the NF or the. It wasn't like officially Nike. It's weird. They call it a different name. I forget what it's called on the website, but it was like cheaper. And I was like, yeah, try it out. Maybe like the material's better or something. So I ordered the Julio. I ordered the True Font. I might even end up fucking keeping both of them if the other one's nice. So I needed some Falcons gear. Um, because, I mean, the Falcons don't play the G Men, but every time the Falcons play the G Men, I get tickets. Me and all my friends get tickets for them. They're obviously G Men fans. And I go to the stadium with my Falcons jersey on and I get shit on. Great day. It's always a great day. But I need some new gear. Got it from the NFL shop. And now it's lit. Now I'm pumped up. I'm going to wear it for my next episode, obviously. And uh, now it's officially wrapped up. So, also, I don't know if you guys care at all, but y'all are welcome to go follow my personal social media stuff. Instagram, Snapchat, whatever you want to do. I'll link it below in the description. I'll put it on the fucking screen right now. Go follow me. We'll see what the big dogs do in real life.